One of the things that people have said about agriculture is that on the whole it's more labor-intensive than hunting and gathering, and that's one of the reasons why people have looked to explanations which, you might say, are kind of corrosive factors, that people have been forced into agriculture because they had no alternative. That is ultimately what may happen. But at the very beginning it could be that agriculture was developed because people wanted special status foods for feasting, that it was actually a social need. I mean, how much of what we do in our lives is generated by competition with others? And a lot of that is powered by desire for new things, new statuses, new whatever it might be. Respect, recognition also are important. And in small-scale societies a lot of those sorts of factors are generated by the ability to, for instance, throw feasts. One possibility is that some of these foods that were being grown were actually intended especially as feasting foods. Interesting sound. I would have guessed a Wild West performer was practicing with a bullwhip while also vacuuming. But no. That sound is apparently produced by the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. Since 2000 researchers at Finland's Aalto University have been collecting audio, as part of what's called the Auroral Acoustics Project. Folk tales have long held that the lights also produce odd sounds, but the claims were hard to prove. And some researchers thought that any noises produced by the energetic particles, that caused the light show would be far too high in the sky to be heard on the ground. But the latest results indicate that at least some sounds are produced very close to the ground. A setup of three ground-based microphones allowed researchers to estimate that the sounds occur perhaps just 70 meters up. So in a very important tense, memory is the cognitive function that stores knowledge that we've acquired through learning and perception, but also memory is important because memory frees our behavior from being controlled by the present stimulus environment. If you didn't have memory, all you'd be able to do was react to whatever is currently in the environment now, whatever it is that you're experiencing. But memory allows us to respond to past events as well as events in the current stimulus environment, and memory also gives us the means to reflect on our experiences so that we plan for future encounters. My hero is Marie Curie. She was a Polish physicist and chemist working in France, and she did conduct pioneering research on radioactivity. She was also the first woman who won a Nobel Prize. Marie Curie is my hero because she showed a lot of determination in following her career path and her passions. She also showed a lot of patience in working for years to receive results from her experiments. And Marie Curie, she designed and built the first mobile X-ray machines. She worked on the front lines of the First World War along with her daughter saving soldiers. Water plays a big role in supporting our communities. As water supplies are stressed by growing populations, climate challenges, and greater competition of resources, the need to leverage innovative technologies and alternative water supplies continues to grow. The challenge for many is matching the quality of water with its intended use. Many water systems use treated wastewater for irrigation or industrial uses where water does not need to be of drinking water quality. Some water systems treat wastewater to drinking water standards and store it underground before using it as a source of drinking water. Right now, farm fresh cherries are in the supermarket shelves, all over the country. Then there'll be apples and pears. The nation receives a large proportion of these fruits from its agricultural regions. Immigrants pick these crops as they do in the rest of the country. The insecticides they 
Ray exposed to while working in the farms can be hazardous for not only them but also for their children. Recent research has shown that exposure to certain insecticides can increase the risk of asthma in young children. We think of money as one of biggest inventions of mankind. With the widespread use of money, finance was born. Nowadays all the economies are financial. Their financial systems have grown in their size and complexity. We see a wide array of financial institutions trading in complex financial assets on interdependent financial markets, with a single aim of bringing together savers and investors in their desire of making the best use of their wealth. Development of financial systems has thus become a close companion of general economic development. At the top of these financial systems are modern central banks, with a difficult task of using money as a steering wheel between the dangers of inflation and recessions. Good understanding of the mechanics of financial systems is of essence. The growing complexity of financial markets in a globalized world is making such a knowledge a necessity for good analytical skills. Lions used to be common enough throughout South Asia, Iran, Asia Minor and even in Greece. They disappeared from these countries a long time ago and are seldom encountered in India. The Indian lion is smaller than his African counterpart. There are two varieties of Asiatic lions, the Persian or Arabian, and the lion of Gujarat the latter confined to a very narrow district. The black bear is the largest wild animal in these parts. It can weigh 225 kilograms or more, but is capable of incredibly fast sprints on rough terrain. It is a wild animal, and protected as such it sometimes loses its normal fear of people. This makes the bear appear tame, but it is then actually more dangerous than its truly wild counterparts. If you come upon a bear while you are in your car, keep the windows shut. Do not attempt to feed, tease, molest, or get close to a bear. Do not try to take a close-up portrait photograph of a bear, either use a telephoto lens or be satisfied with a distant shot. Plants are living and therefore require food of some kind as well as air and water in the same way, and for the same purposes as do animals. As a rule, we cannot see them breathing and eating, but that is because we do not look in the right way. In our study of plants we must first learn how to see and question them properly, and when we have done this they will show themselves to us, and tell us stories of their lives which are quite as interesting as any animal stories. Children's natural desires lie primarily in the realm of sensation. New things to look at or new sounds to hear, especially when they involve the spectacle of action of a violent sort, will always divert the attention from abstract conceptions of objects verbally taken in. The grimace that one student makes, the spitballs that another is ready to throw, the dog fighting in the street, or the ringing of distant fire engine, these are the rivals with which the powers of the teacher to be interesting have to cope incessantly. The child will always be more concerned in what a teacher is doing than what the same teacher is saying that the children are relaxed and attentive during experiments or when the teacher is drawing on the blackboard. Switzerland in watchmaking followed precisely the example of Germany in clockmaking. It commenced there in the 17th and culminated in the 19th century. Many thousands of its population were engaged in the business and it flourished under the fostering care of the government by the establishment of astronomical observations for testing the adjustment of the best watches, the giving of prizes, and the establishment and encouragement of schools of horology conducted on thorough scientific methods.
A quarter of a century ago it was estimated that in Switzerland 40,000 persons out of a population of 150,000 were engaged in watchmaking, and that the annual production sometimes reached 1,600,000 completed movements. The whole world was their market. The United States alone was importing 134,000 watches annually from that country. The spectroscope is an instrument by which the colors of the solar rays are separated and viewed, as well as those of other incandescent bodies. By it, not only the elements of the heavenly bodies have been determined, but remarkable results have been had in analyzing well-known metals and discovering new ones. Its powers and its principles have been so developed during the century by the discoveries, inventions, and investigations of Herschel, Wollaston, Fraunhofer, Bronson and Kirchhoff, Steinheil, Tyndall, Huggins, Draper, and others. That spectrum analysis has grown from the separation of light into its colors, by the prism of Newton, to what Dr. Huggins has aptly termed a new sense. A female dragonfly drops her eggs in the water, or lays them on water weeds, perhaps cutting an incision where they can be the more safely lodged, or even goes down below the surface and deposits them in the mud at the bottom of a pond. From the eggs are hatched the aquatic larvae which differ in many respects from the imago. The dragonfly larva has the same predatory mode of life as its parent, but it is sluggish in habit, lurking for its prey at the bottom of the pond, among the mud or vegetation, which it resembles in color. The larva lurks in its hiding place or suddenly darts out so as to secure any unwary small insect that may pass close enough for capture. Dragonfly larvae walk, and also swim by movements of the abdomen or by expelling a jet of water from the hindgut. Albert Einstein's theory of relativity is a fundamental pillar of modern physics. It describes how the laws of physics apply to objects moving at different speeds and how gravity affects the curvature of spacetime. The theory has been verified through numerous experiments and observations and has led to groundbreaking discoveries, such as black holes and the Big Bang. Its implications extend beyond physics, influencing fields such as astronomy, cosmology, and even philosophy. Biotechnology is a rapidly growing field that combines biology and technology to create new products and services. From genetically modified crops to personalized medicine, biotech innovations are changing the way we live and work. Advances in gene editing, tissue engineering, and bioinformatics are expanding our understanding of life itself and are opening up new possibilities for improving human health and well-being as biotechnology continues to evolve. Its impact on society is likely to become even more profound. Game theory is a branch of mathematics that explores how people make decisions in situations where their choices depend on the choices of others. It has applications in fields as diverse as economics, political science, and psychology. Game theory models can help us understand how markets work, how elections are won, and how conflicts are resolved. The field has grown in importance in recent years as online networks and social media have created new opportunities for strategic interaction.
Human anatomy is the study of the structure and function of the human body. It encompasses everything from the smallest cells to the largest organs and systems. Understanding the intricacies of human anatomy is essential for medical professionals, as well as for researchers working to develop new treatments and therapies. Advances in imaging technology, such as MRI and CT scans, have made it possible to explore the human body in unprecedented detail, leading to new insights and discoveries. Environmental science is the study of the natural world and its interactions with human society. It covers a wide range of topics, from climate change and pollution to biodiversity and conservation, as human activity continues to put pressure on the environment. Environmental science is becoming increasingly important for understanding the impact of our actions and for developing strategies to mitigate negative effects. It also plays a crucial role in shaping policy and public opinion on environmental issues.